Will magnesium become the next vitamin D? Vitamin D has emerged as a nutrient with astonishing value in disease prevention. Its low cost enables virtually anyone to supplement with enough potency to obtain broad spectrum benefits. Magnesium has similar attributes since it provides robust health effects, costs very little, and most Americans don't get enough. The best way to summarize vitamin D is that people who are deficient suffer more degenerative illness and premature death. The same holds true for magnesium. Scientists recognize magnesium mostly as it relates to protection against cardiovascular disorders. Higher magnesium intake is associated with reduced risks of sudden cardiac death, stroke, type 2 diabetes, asthma, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, hypertension, and osteoporosis. What few publications discuss are findings showing cancer risk reductions in those who ingest higher amounts of magnesium. The challenge when assessing dietary magnesium intake is the inconsistency of the amount of magnesium contained in food. Magnesium is not manufactured inside plants like disease-fighting polyphenols. This means the quantity of dietary magnesium is largely dictated by the amount of magnesium in the soil that the food is grown in or the mineral content of the water one drinks, both of which are highly variable. In a landmark human study, there were marked reductions in pancreatic cancer risk in those who ingested higher amounts of magnesium, primarily in dietary supplements. Other studies show colon cancer risk reductions in response to higher magnesium intake. The totality of evidence supporting magnesium's systemic benefits may soon transform this mineral into the next vitamin D as far as widespread public use is concerned. This is great news for Americans who face a phalanx of degenerative disorders that magnesium has been shown to protect against. It's regrettable that it has taken so long for this realization to manifest. Before the sun sets today, about 145 Americans will learn they have pancreatic cancer. It will likely be the worst day of their lives. There are no good treatment options. The newly diagnosed cancer patient faces a litany of bad choices that are unlikely to be curative but will inflict horrific side effects. Diabetics are at a higher risk for pancreatic cancer. A high percentage of pancreatic cancer patients also have type 2 diabetes. Research has shown that about 80% of pancreatic cancer patients had diabetes or glucose intolerance upon their cancer diagnosis. These findings support current research showing elevated cancer risks in people with higher blood glucose levels. In response to excess glucose, more insulin is secreted, which in turn fuels growth of malignant cells. An interesting finding we reported several years ago showed that type 2 diabetics that used the drug metformin had a 62% lower pancreatic cancer risk compared to those who had not taken the drug. One of, one of metformin's properties is to improve insulin sensitivity by activating a cell energy enzyme called AMPK. The risk of contracting type 2 diabetes is lower in those with higher intakes of magnesium. A meta-analysis of human studies found that for every 100 milligrams of increase in magnesium intake, the risk of developing type 2 diabetes decreased by 15%. This understanding has led researchers to investigate whether people who consume more magnesium have lower pancreatic cancer incidence. Higher magnesium intake lowers pancreatic cancer risk. A landmark study meticulously evaluated data from a large group of adults and found that a modest increase in assessed magnesium intake from a combination of diet and supplements resulted in profound reductions in pancreatic cancer risk. What struck us about this study's findings is that it did not require a large amount of additional magnesium to produce a meaningful reduction in pancreatic cancer risk. Researchers found that pancreatic cancer risk increased by 24% for every 100 milligrams decrease in magnesium intake below the recommended daily allowance. For example, an individual with a daily magnesium intake of 200 milligrams has a 24% increased risk of pancreatic cancer compared to a person who ingests 300 milligrams a day. Both of these intakes, 200 milligrams and 300 milligrams a day of magnesium, are considered deficient even by government standards. 
This study, published in late 2015, evaluated data from the Vitamins and Lifestyle trial involving more than 66,000 men and women aged 50 to 76 years who were followed for an eight-year period. The subjects were divided into the following three groups based upon their magnesium intake. One was the optimal intake, defined as ingesting greater or equal to 100% of the government RDA for magnesium. That's 420 milligrams a day for males and 320 milligrams a day for females. Group two, suboptimal intake. That's a daily intake of 75% to 99% of the government RDA for magnesium. And group 3, deficient intake, less than 75% of the government RDA for magnesium, which would be less than 315 milligrams a day for males and less than 240 milligrams a day for females. Those who ingested 75% to 99% of the government's RDA for magnesium that's the suboptimal intake group, had a 42% greater risk of pancreatic cancer incidence compared with those ingesting greater than or equal to 100% of the magnesium RDA. Those who ingested less than 75% of the government's RDA for magnesium, that's the deficient intake group, had a striking 76% greater risk of pancreatic cancer incidence compared to those whose intake of magnesium was equal to or greater than the government's RDA, which is the optimal intake group. When analyzing those who met or exceeded the government's RDA for total magnesium intake, only those who took dietary supplements containing magnesium were able to consistently achieve the benefits. This led the authors to state that to gain the benefit of magnesium, at least at the recommended daily allowance level, that dietary magnesium intake alone may not be sufficient. What's striking about these findings is that the amount of added magnesium needed to meet the government's RDA was exceedingly small. For most people, taking one magnesium capsule a day or obtaining it in a, in a scientifically formulated multinutrient formula is all that is needed to produce the robust preventive effect against pancreatic cancer. This and other studies you're about to learn about are why we think that magnesium supplementation is destined to become as prevalent as vitamin D is today. Previous studies sought to establish a link between magnesium ingestion and pancreatic cancer. Ascertaining the precise amount of magnesium ingested was challenging due to variability of magnesium content of food and water. Two initial case control studies showed an, uh, showed an association between higher magnesium intake and lower pancreatic cancer rates, whereas a similar case control study found no association. Other studies found a reduced rate of pancreatic cancer only in heavier men, which is significant because obesity is a pancreatic cancer risk factor. One of these studies published in 2010 showed a reduction in pancreatic cancer in men with a body mass index of 25 or more who consumed higher amounts of magnesium. This study showed a 33% reduced pancreatic cancer risk in overweight men whose average daily magnesium intake was 423 milligrams compared to 281 milligrams. Another study showed that for each 100 milligram increase in magnesium intake amongst overweight men, there was a 21% decreased risk. Once again, a relatively small amount of magnesium supplementation would have placed all these men into the higher protective category. Since the majority of aging men are overweight, this finding has significant public health implications. These findings corroborate the 2015 report showing only a small increase in ingested magnesium significantly reduces pancreatic cancer risk. Pancreatic cancer is the fourth leading cause of cancer-related mortality in the U.S. Pancreatic cancer is rapidly fatal with little long-term effective treatment and a five-year survival rate of 7%. Factors associated with pancreatic cancer risk include cigarette smoking, diabetes, obesity, unhealthy dietary practices, and low intake of specific nutrients such as vitamin E, C, B6, B12, carotenoids, folate, lycopene, and selenium. Until a cure is discovered, identification of modifiable risk factors is crucial to reduce pancreatic cancer mortality. 
In observational studies, type 2 diabetes has been consistently associated with an elevated risk of pancreatic cancer. Current findings support a role for glucose intolerance, insulin resistance, and excess blood insulin in the development of pancreatic cancer. Studies with long follow-up periods have consistently found an association between elevated after-meal or fasting glucose levels and higher pancreatic cancer risk. Given that, the, to the totality of studies on pancreatic cancer risk, dietary factors such as magnesium and drugs such as metformin that improve insulin sensitivity may exert a major impact on pancreatic cancer risk reduction. Magnesium and colorectal cancer. Colorectal cancer is expected to be diagnosed in almost 135,000 Americans and to cause about 50,000 deaths this year. It is less feared than pancreatic cancer because treatments are less mutilating and cure rates are far higher. A large study evaluating Japanese men found that those with the highest dietary intake of magnesium were over 50% less likely to contract colon cancer. A study emanating from the Netherlands showed that for each extra 100 mg increase in magnesium intake, there was a 19% reduction in colorectal adenomas, which are precursors to colon tumors. The second part of this study found that for each additional 100 mg of magnesium, there was a 12% reduction in colorectal cancer risk. Again, we're seeing a relatively modest increase in magnesium ingestion, inducing meaningful cancer risk reductions. Magnesium plays essential roles in regulating genome stability, cell signaling, insulin sensitivity, systemic inflammation, and DNA maintenance and repair. It is therefore not surprising that low intake of magnesium is associated with increased risk of certain cancers. Food sources of magnesium are not reliable. A website for medical professionals lists magnesium-rich foods as leafy vegetables, nuts, legumes, whole grains, fruits, and fish. While these fit into the healthy food category, one cannot reliably expect to obtain consistent and sufficient amounts of magnesium by ingesting them. Magnesium content in vegetables has seen huge declines since pre-1950 levels. Typical grain refining processes for bread and pasta remove 80 to 95 percent of total magnesium. There needs to be sufficient soil concentration of magnesium for plants to absorb it in the first place. In some instances, soils have too much potassium which competes for absorption of magnesium into the plant. There are certain bottled waters that naturally contain high amounts of magnesium, but these are rare on the commercial marketplace. Urgent need for magnesium supplementation. Life Extension first advocated for higher dose magnesium supplementation in 1981. Back in those days, calcium supplements were very popular, but few of them contained enough magnesium. Overlooked was the vital role that magnesium played in overall health, including maintaining bone density. Most people today associate magnesium as a mineral that reduces cardiovascular risk. A wealth of published scientific data supports this. With accumulating data showing that magnesium can slash risks of common cancers, we think the use of magnesium supplements will soon rise to the level of must-have nutrients like vitamin D. Similar to vitamin D, magnesium costs so little that it is readily affordable by almost everyone which has huge implications in improving public health. You've been listening to an article published in the December 2016 issue of the Life Extension magazine by William Falloon. This video was brought to you by ScottHealthSystems.com, bringing you life-changing products and empowering information. If you like what you just heard, please support us by purchasing our great health products at ScottHealthSystems.com. We're not asking for donations or charity, but you can support us and yourself by purchasing our great products. Thanks for listening and be sure to subscribe to this channel and click on the link below and visit scotthealthsystems.com.